folks, Alan Taylor here to talk to you about the vertebral artery. That tiny little artery that runs up through the cervical spine here, makes its way through the intervertebral foramen, through C1, emerges briefly and then makes its way up into the occiput. A tortuous route and a long and tortuous history. The artery rose to prominence before and around 1980 when it was associated with dizziness and vertigo, amongst other symptoms, which were linked to reduced blood flow to the brain. Back in 1988, the Australian Physiotherapy Association incorporated the vertebral artery test into the protocol for the pre-manipulative testing of the cervical spine. If you're not familiar with it, the vertebral artery test is the notion that by turning the head into full rotation and maybe adding some degree of extension, into the um, equation, this would somehow test the patency of the vertebral artery. Or at the very least, whether a patient might be suffering from vertebrobasilar insufficiency as a result of movement-induced alteration in blood flow. Now, that's where the fun begins. The Australian Physiotherapy Association protocol was updated in 2001 by the guidance for pre-manipulative testing Back then, the debate was about cervical manipulation and the suggestion was that in conjunction with a subjective and objective screening and a negative VBI test, cervical manipulation may be applied. In other words, the test together with the screening was the green light for a high velocity thrust of the cervical spine to take place. But the challenges were rolling in thick and fast as some authors began to question the validity of the use of the vertebral artery test as a tool for risk assessment for the cervical spine. The test was in use in chiropractic and osteopathic circles too, and Thiel and Ricks in 2003 went so far as to ask the question whether it was time to stop using the test. Following the publication of this paper in 2006 introducing the concept of cervical arterial dysfunction, we had an interesting debate with the editors of Manual Therapy at the time with regard to the ongoing use of the vertebral artery test in the light of a more inclusive, system-based approach. In 2012, IFOMP put together a consensus document which was a clinical reasoning framework for risk assessment of the cervical spine. This put together some new features which included uh, the use of blood pressure measurement and cranial nerve testing for the first time. On page 20 of the document, references made to positional testing and sustained end range ro rotation and the sustained pre-manipulative test position, which are both variations of the vertebral artery test, are mentioned. However, the comment or rider that goes with that is that the predictive ability of either of those tests to identify at-risk individuals is lacking. So some question marks over the validity of the test, but no direction as to whether to use the test or not. What we all needed around that time was a systematic review which would look at the evidence and give us some idea of the diagnostic accuracy of the vertebral artery test. That review came in 2013 from Hutting et al, a little bit too late for the IFOMT uh, document that preceded it. From the four studies they looked at, they reported a specificity ranging from 67 to 100%. However, sensitivity was low and ranged from 0 to 57% and that was considered not sufficient for a valid test. The concern was that false negatives could easily be misinterpreted by clinicians. In 2017, the Australian Physiotherapy Association put together their clinical guide for safe manual therapy practice in the cervical spine. And with that, you got two downloadable guides. The eagle-eyed will have spotted a contradiction in terminology. IFOMPT were using cervical arterial dysfunction from the system-based approach proposed by Kerry and Taylor. Uh, whilst the Australians were using the same acronym, CAD, for cervical arterial dissection. Feeling a little confused? You're not the only one. In 2020, Thomas and Trelieven continued this academic debate. Their position was that vertebral artery testing still has an important role for screening and differential diagnosis, and essentially that the test should not be abandoned. What followed was a letter to the editor from Kerry Hutting and Cranenberg 
who suggested that rather than concentrating on a single test, the vertebral artery test, for a very rare event anyway, that holistic practice framework should be developed to aid risk assessment in the cervical spine and incorporate all of the thinking around the topic. Not to be deterred, Thomas and Trelieva made a quick fire response to Kerry et al, uh, making the case for continued use of this vertebral artery test. Whilst they considered that they had little or no argument with the contention that a negative test could be easily misinterpreted as a green light to go ahead with whatever intervention was intended, they provided an argument for the continued use of the tests, which revolved around case series and case studies, mainly around the topic of Bo Hunter syndrome, which is a rare condition um, where patients who turn their head to one side will commonly uh, report vertebrobasilar insufficiency symptoms, a common one being drop attacks. The final strand of the argument was that tests should continue to be used as a form of differentiation between vertebrobasilar insufficiency, vestibular pathology and cervicogenic dizziness. Very few studies at this stage support that contention. So finally, in the seminally titled paper, Yes, We Should Abandon Pre-Treatment Positional Testing of the Cervical Spine, Hutting, Cranenberg and Kerry put together their perhaps final argument that the vertebral artery test has little or no clinical utility. And they base this argument around major adverse events and relate this to manual therapy. And they talk about the aim of the test and they talk about the potential faulty mechanisms behind it or theories behind it and they suggest that the vertebral artery test should be abandoned. So I told you it was going to be a tortuous route and it was. That test, that old test, it's been around for years and years. Some people say it's time it went, some people say it still has some uses. Uh, and if you feel a bit confused and I wouldn't be surprised if you were, then I'll start by saying that both sets of authors have got some validity in what they say, but equally we can make some critique of both schools of thought. So in part two of these short films on the vertebral artery, I'll consider how as a potentially confused clinician, you can begin to interpret these wildly different schools of thought and make some sense of risk assessment in the cervical spine, because that's something everybody needs to do whether they use manual therapy or not, because all of us will be managing the cervical spine in one way or the other, which means we have to make the right decisions in what potentially is the most risky part of the body. Good luck out there.